Hola familia, bienvenidos otra vez to our channel, Why Not Now? My name is Steven, and over here, this is my beautiful wife, Lisa Marie. So what are we talking about today, baby? So I thought how appropriate to talk about a comment that we've received. And um, I, you know, when I read it, I thought, of course, I thought he had a good point because there are a lot of things that, that were said in that comment that I do agree with, um, not for everyone, but there is a significant you know, population of extranjeros, of foreigners, of immigrants, of expats, however you want to word it, whatever you want to use, aliens that come to Latin America, that come to Mexico, um, you know, and what, I guess the, the, the topic of the day is why really, why really are, you know, Americans or people from the United States or people from Canada, however you want to word it, why are they flocking? Why are they coming and moving to Mexico? Why are they moving to countries in Latin America? I want to talk about this, but before we get started, I got a lot of positive feedback from the cooking chat. I can tell that people were really liking it. They were giving us a thumbs up. Thank you for hitting the likes. That shows me, uh, you know, what to do with our content. You know, maybe things like this where we have deep conversations or maybe just even just light conversations, humorous conversations. And, you know, we can do cooking, a little cooking, show you what we're making, show you how we, you know, budget here in Mexico, show you our little piece of our cost of living. You know, we've done a couple of cost of living videos here in Mexico. But um, we use, you know, leftover you know, little bits of what we have left over to create a meal here. We show you how to get creative. So if we get those likes, we know you're enjoying these cooking chats where we're talking about things, whether deep or lighthearted, and we're doing some cooking, we'll, we'll continue doing that. Maybe once a month, we'll, we'll go ahead and add that. But let us know that you like it, comment, and, and let us know your thoughts. But most importantly, what you're going to be commenting today, today I want to open up the floor. We're here to really find out what your thoughts are. I want to hear from people, my, my friends, my amigos in Mexico. I want to hear from people all through Latin America. I don't care where, what country you are. I want to know your thoughts, your opinions, your perspective. Again, I say this to everyone. Do it respectfully. You can share things that you don't like, but as long as you're not using profanity or attacking people. But, but share, you know, if you're upset about something, you can share. Just think about, you know, how you, your delivery is. So I want to hear from my Mexicanos, my, my, all of my people, even from the United States, Canada, wherever you are throughout the world. We have people watching us all over the world. So I want to hear your thoughts on this. I want to know, number one, what are your thoughts about why foreigners, why extranjeros move to Latin America, why they move to Mexico? Do you know anyone and what was their reason for moving? Um, why would you move here? Why did you move here if you already live here in Mexico? If you're living in Mexico, I want to know your thoughts. I want to get all different perspectives. I want to have a real, genuine, deep, sometimes you know, it could be, you know, it can bring about a little controversy type of conversation on this channel about this topic. So before we get started, I'm going to read this comment to you. Let me grab my phone right here and get my glasses because those of you who know, when you get up in your 40s, oh, things start to go. So a little bit, getting a little bit, a uh, little old here. So this comment is from, his initials are just together, capital R, capital L, so RL. And the comment was made uh, actually today, and it was made on our residency panic, our uh, panic video. I'll, I'll put that in the in our in our pin comment, so you can go ahead and, and check it out if you haven't seen it. We got into some 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 topics there that were much needed, and he this is his comment. And you can also see what I responded um, if you choose to at a later point. But he said, RL says, let's be real. You don't see videos on how much better Mexican culture is compared to Western culture. Mexico is fully aware that foreigners are at best materialistic and could care less about Mexican culture and politics. Because if America was more affordable, they would never think about moving to Mexico. They just want to stretch their money to consume more and better material goods. So if you're planning on moving to Latin America, you better be quick about it because this is just the beginning. Okay, now, I didn't get offended by that comment. Okay, obviously my husband and I, you know we're from the United States, but you know we're very well-rounded and we have friends from all walks of life and all cultures, okay. 
I looked at that and I try to be, you know, when I looked at it, I looked at it from an unbiased perspective. He has, some, he has some points. I'm gonna be honest with you. My husband and I talk about this on, the ch on our channel all the time. You know, we, we see a lot of people coming down here, whether it's from social media, whether it's other YouTube channels, whether it's just regular folk moving here, and they want to live this luxurious lifestyle. And, you know, they use the C word. You know how much we hate the C word on our channel. Our valuable viewers, our day oneers, know what that C word is. I'm not going to say it. Comment below. You know what that word is, okay? We hate saying things are in Mexico or in other countries because you have to factor in the country where you're living and the wages that the people are making. Okay, so once you factor that in, if you did not have foreign currency, would you be saying that? Would you be saying it so? See, right? Okay, so we're going to get deeper into that conversation. But before we do, let's get to the other important stuff here. We have my leftover ingredients. We're going to make today a brown stew chicken. You know, I'm from New York. I was born and raised. You know, I talked about this before in our other cooking chat. That we did we did a how uh how we met cooking chat which a lot of people enjoyed i'll pin that below as well and we did another cooking chat where we showed you how to how to make two meals out of one piece of meat okay so and you also get to see my husband and what he begs for he nags me to do for him at least once a month check that out as well i'll pin that below but we have our ingredients here so here we have our scallions right our green onions i have a bunch here as you can see I have my Scotch Bonnet Pepper. It's also known as a uh, Caribbean Red Pepper. There are many names for it. It, it has, packs a lot of heat. Depends on how much heat you like. Uh, I may just use one today. We'll see how hot my husband wants his uh, brown stew chicken today. I have several cloves of garlic, which I have already pre-peeled and ready for you all, okay? I have a big handful of cilantro. My, I love cilantro. It makes everything so amazing. So what's gonna happen here is, I'm going to show you how to make this green seasoning that was taught to me many, many, many decades ago. I'm, I'm telling my age again. From I had a best friend that was from Trinidad. I had a lot of friends that were from, they were Guyanese and Jamaican friends. And, you know, this is very much how they, how they cook and season. And, and let me tell you, when you eat the cooking, oh, it's so good. It's so addictive. So I'm the kind of person when I like something and my husband likes something, I try to figure out how to make it at home. It's more budget friendly than going out to eat. So... We also have some cabbage on the table, which my husband is going to make the cabbage because he makes a good cabbage and, and he uses a couple of simple ingredients like a chicken cube and some garlic powder and some onion powder, black pepper and so on and so forth. He's going to go ahead and do that. Um, and then I'm going to just do a quick coconut rice. Now, I'll be honest with you. I usually do the coconut rice. I will use, I will throw like a scotch bonnet pepper on top when it's boiling, uh, in, when it's cooking. I will also chop some scallions up, but I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to do all the extra today. I'll add kidney beans sometimes to my coconut rice. I'm not doing that today. We're just going to make a basic coconut rice, um, use what we have. And I will show you how to season this, what we'll call it the green, it's called green chicken, right? We'll season, it's not really green. You're going to see it turns out to be brown. We're going to go ahead and use um, scallions, garlic, scotch bonnet, cilantro, and that is the base of our green seasoning. And that is going to go into this chicken. It's going to marinate for a few hours. I've already pre-washed my chicken as I was taught from my Trini mom back when I was a child. I miss her, Miss Betty Gampat. If you ever, ever find me again, please, I need to know how to make that coconut bake. Okay, she said, you clean the chicken with the lime. You don't do it no other, you clean it with the lime, not water. So I've done it like that. We're gonna salt it, pepper it, and we're gonna add a little bit of ketchup. Trust me, you're gonna think it's weird, but watch when you see the end result. Now, let's go ahead and get to the prep chopping and get it in the blender.
All right, for those of you who remember, I don't have a higher power blender, so we improvise. One of my viewers really liked this, so I'm gonna show you again how you improvise. Okay, so we have our green seasoning, and let me tell you, it is potent. Do not, do not touch it and touch your eye. I, I promise, don't say I didn't warn you. The smell, my husband, when I make him smell this, come here, husband, smell this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really potent, it's good. So, first and foremost, okay, we're gonna put all that green seasoning on this chicken. Most importantly right now, we have to salt the chicken. Okay, I'm not, I don't do measurements. Okay, as you can see how much chicken I have in here. I have a mixture of thighs and legs. I pulled the skin off. I, again, I washed it with the uh, lime, fresh lime juice. All right. And we're going to go ahead and salt the chicken. We're going to go ahead and give it a toss with this plastic spoon over here, which is not doing the best job, right? But we work with what we got. We're in a furnished department, right? So. I'm going to add a little bit more because I go by feeling. Okay, that's enough salt. Now, we salted the chicken. Let's get the green seasoning in. You guys are going to be amazed at what this is going to look like. The end result, it doesn't look anything like this. And it is so flavorful, it's so delicious, honestly. You wanna get every little bit of that seasoning in there. All right, so as you can see, we got a green seasoning in here. I'm gonna put some ketchup in there. You can put black pepper, I don't know, maybe a couple tablespoons. You can put black pepper in here if you want to. You don't have to. Actually, I'm gonna put a little bit more because I have quite a bit of chicken. You don't have to, it's up to you. And then what we're going to do is do our best to mix everything up. And as you're mixing this, I kid you not, if any of you, um, I, I know I should have, a, we have viewers all over the world, so if you guys make this differently, let me know how you make it because I love, love, love learning new ways of making things. But for those of you who try to do this at home, tell me about the smells. Tell me about the aroma because I am, I promise you it is like nothing you've ever smelled before it is so good so good the combinations together so as you can see here how it looks you want it to be completely incorporated I'm gonna keep mixing and then we're gonna go ahead momentarily and I'm going to put this in the fridge the goal is to marinate it for at least few hours but preferably overnight that's the that's usually how I do it um, if I'm not in a rush I'll just go ahead and do this the day before and then I'll go ahead and make it the next day for those of you who are looking at my dry knuckles forgive me they are burning right now okay you know now that we moved back to the colonial highlands area where it's a drier climate here in Mexico beautiful Mexico we are struggling again with dry skin and no matter what we put on our skin CeraVe, we tried, oh my God, everything you could think of. It, it just doesn't, it doesn't work because you know we we're constantly washing our hands now given the pandemic situation um, in general. And then, you know, you have the dry climate and I love, love the dry climate. You know, we lived in, in Querétaro, Mexico for over a year and we loved it. We realized that we don't really care for humidity. We went to Mazatlan, we went to Oaxaca. Um, check out those videos, but you know that we prefer the dry climate. We prefer living in central Mexico. So we are loving it, but somebody help me with these. I mean, I have such dry knuckles and it's very painful. I'm always in the water washing dishes and doing things, so. All right, let's get this in the fridge. Okay, so as you can see in here, I have some canola oil, a few tablespoons, and I am quickly, and I'm not, not uh, wasting any time to stir up a, little, a few tablespoons of brown sugar. 
that you need to get to a certain consistency. This is the tricky part. So I'm doing this fast because my particular guest over here um, in Mexico, it, it, it doesn't go any lower than this. So as you can see, that's the lowest the flame goes. So usually I do it at a lower flame and I can manage it, but I have to really, really monitor this brown sugar. I'll show you how it looks. When it starts to get like, you see it lightly bubbling and it gets almost like a syrup, but not completely, like it's getting close to that. That's when you wanna quickly go ahead and toss your chicken in and start to stir it up really, really quickly. check it every now and then you want it to get a nice golden brown color and then you want the heat to go low so it can simmer and cook thoroughly and believe me your kitchen is going to smell incredible i got the rice cooking right now and my husband will show you he quickly so he did a quick like a uh, quick boil on the cabbage not too long he's got it ready to go and then he's going to go ahead and toss up some uh, onions with some butter and some all his little spices and he's going to make the cabbage for me so I always let him know how delicious, how delicious uh, his cabbage is. He made us a lemon pepper fries the last time. You saw me begging him to cook for me more. So he really, he really underestimates his ability. He's a real good cook. So back to the topic at hand. So about this comment, and I want to ask my husband too, because I know we shared our personal thoughts about what we think and how we live our life and why we came to Mexico. You know, we did that video recently. It's called Going Back. I'll pin that below as well. We broke down five points as to why we would not go back to the United States. Doesn't mean we won't go to another country now, but why we want to stay here in Mexico. And you should, we actually shared some very personal stuff about our, our personal lives as well. So check that video out, I'll pin that below. But why do you think a lot of, you know, extranjeros, a lot of foreigners, you know, come to and want to live in Mexico or Ecuador or Costa Rica, Panama, all these places people are flocking to, it seems like, right? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Let me do it like it's an interview. You know, if somebody asks you a question, you have to think about it. <clears throat> That's a great question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you stall them out so you can think. That's what they say, yeah. <laughs> so um, All right. Yeah, that is a great question, though. And, and, and shout out to my man who um, sent that comment. Um, we briefly spoke about it because you know we're the type of people that we moved down here to um, have a better quality of life to allow our money to go a little bit further and also just to be simple as I don't know what like just stress free that was our whole purpose of it and also to experience the Mexican, Mexican culture so I don't know like you guys really tell us I kind of think sometimes people come down here and, and I always say it, want to live this luxury lifestyle because you have some people saying, you can get this home for uh, a million bucks, but if you well, go to California. Remember that lady who said. In, in Rosarito Beach or something. That's right. She said that someone had made a comment about Mexico isn't the C word. She, yeah, I hate saying yeah, that word. Exactly. That. And then she said. Well, we could, she had gotten a condo for $300,000 yeah. on the beach. She said, we could never get this in California. Exactly. Or something and like that. So that's the, that's the other group of people, I think, that um, they know they can't afford a certain lifestyle in, in where the United States or Canada, whatever they live in. And like, like the comment was saying, that the materialism, they want to go stretch the dollar further. Um, yeah, this lady had made a comment about, yeah, we can never afford this in San Diego. So we moved to Rosarito Beach or something. We have a HOA and all that stuff. It's pretty much like you bring the United States to Mexico or Panama or wherever you're going. Um, and I'm going to talk further about that because I'll be watching some of House Hunters International. You know, yeah, we watch House right. Hunters. That was last night we watched um, But then it's another group, you know, they're, they're cancer survivors. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're, their lives are so stressed out 
Yeah, they, that, they battle terminal illness. Yeah, like terminal illness. Months. Yeah, we've met so many people that's dealing with that, and they come over here and they they don't have to take certain medi medicine medicine medi they don't have to take certain meds anymore because the the, the difference of their life they're living over here the food. Um, it's just less stressful for them. Yeah, and even those who have to take those medications, they're <clears> getting them at a, a, a fraction, fraction of, the, of cost, the cost, which makes no sense to me. The pharmaceutical companies, I'm sorry, it ticks me off. Why do we pay so much? In the United States, yeah. our health insurance, just deductibles and, you know, co-insurance and, you know, my God, co-pays. I can go on and on and on. And then after you go to the doctor and you pay those things and you pay the co-pay, you still get a bill in the mail telling you you owe X, Y, yeah. and Z. It's a never ending. Over here, we don't even have health insurance. Nope. We've been here for almost two years never, and haven't had a major issue. And knock when on we, wood. Knock on wood. I'm sorry. Here. Big wood. So, you know, and if we do, we just we go and we pay straight cash and we know when we're done paying, that's, that's it. it. Yep, that's it. We're that, done. That's it. Like we were talking to someone the other day where they were telling us how much they were charged. Pay for an MRI over here. Uh, I think she said it was either 150 or 300. I forgot. And, Com and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say her name, but if she feels comfortable, she can put it in the comments. Yeah. But I think it was like between 150 and 300 that's, that's for an insane. MRI. Unheard of. Unheard. Even with greatest insurance over in the states, you know. Um, but yeah, it's like either you're gonna come down here, live a certain lifestyle. Um, we fall into that category where we come down here. We just we love the Mexican culture. We just live in very simple. And um, you have others. Can, and to those who say that simple living, we should that we want to live in a village. That's not what that's we mean. That's ignorance to me. Yeah, it I'm, is. It really is. I'm it doesn't sorry mean for saying that it, but you can't have, you can't live comfortably. No one is saying that. Yeah, that's. that's what does it mean? I mean, be mindful of yeah. the pricing of where you're going where you to going? live. Do your research. Don't go and overpay. Don't say it's so you know c word where I come. You're not where you're coming from. Uh, just assess the local wages of the city, exactly. the country, whether you're in the United States or whether you're leaving the country of where you're going. That makes sense to me. Yeah, and don't, yeah, I, I don't like when people come down here and compare. And, and if that's what you do, that's what you do. Like someone said, we were talking about something in Oaxaca, but we got a lot of slack in Oaxaca. But they got on us about Oaxaca, but oh, yeah, I don't care good. because it's our truth. Um, they were saying, you can't even open up a. We were saying something about um, the Sorry, taxi. Sorry, the smoke. <laughs> we were saying something about the taxi ride um, in Oaxaca, and we were saying how much it was costing. And she was saying in New York City, you can't even get it. You can't even open a taxi door for five dollars. Light bulb goes off in your head. Like, come on, <laughs> you're not in New York City. You know, New York City, um, you can't compare the price. To, <clears throat> Sorry, to prices in Mississippi, prices in, in Atlanta. But unless so, you, unless you want now 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 I'll say this and, and <clears> catch your <throat> breath because any kind of smoke bothers him, which was funny to me when somebody said we were high in maintenance. The reason why we left Oaxaca when we said we couldn't breathe, Ooh. when you could see even just basic smoke like cooking, he has an issue with his nostrils. He can't breathe. He gets choked up. Or if you've seen him in other videos when people walk by smoking a cigarette, he'll get choked up. He'll literally get choked up. But they said, you know, uh, uh, oh my God, what was it? I lost my train of thought. What, what was I just saying? About high maintenance. About well, before that, I was saying something else. I, so. I don't know. We, we do a lot of rounding <laughs> sometimes. So. But, but, yeah, my whole point was um, don't go comparing everything to where you're from. Don't compare California to Texas. Don't compare Texas to Alabama. Don't compare um, uh, uh, D.C. to New Hampshire. You know, it, everything is totally different. Mm -hmm. United you have States to, understand. to Mexico, Canada to Mexico, yeah, Australia Thailand, to Mexico. yeah, you can't do Columbia that. Columbia to the U.S., whatever you want yeah. to say. Yeah, um, the whole point of you coming, I personally feel, would be to come in and make your dollar go further and live very frugal. Don't come over here and try to buy a house for, or, or I'm going to buy this land and then I'm going to build a house for a million bucks. Like, what's the whole point of that? You might as well stay in the United States. And to, live to, that to, life to, there. Keep the life, lifestyle. Yeah. But... And, <clears throat> you know, the bottom line is, this is us going, you know, we're obviously you can see the passion and, and you know, the frustration, but you know, it doesn't mean you come down here and you have to live like in a wooden shack. No one is saying that. Please, for those yeah, of you yes. who like to go and twist things, I've said it before, before you get your little fingers ready, just stop right there. Okay, because that's not what anyone's saying. I know you get all happy and you want to just go ahead and cre create and incite controversy. Don't do that. Share your opinion, share, share respectfully, mm -hmm. and listen to what we're saying. Don't just go ahead and twist it into what you want it to be. But if you're one of those people, you know, that's fine. That, that's your prerogative. But we also have, it's our prerogative to speak our opinion as well and, and say what we want to say. So 
you know, it's just pretty much like don't don't come over here because all you're gonna do, and we said this before, you're pushing the locals out of neighborhoods yeah. that that are very nice and lovely and where they've <clears throat> you know been all their whole lives, their families have been, because all of a sudden everybody wants to upcharge and, and it's the landlord's fault too. I'm not gonna say in any country you go to, there's greed out there. They have to there's take responsibility too. But we have to also there's a call to action for us where we can minimize the impact of the foreigner tax. We're gonna pay a little bit higher, sure. We know that already. And maybe maybe you have a different standard. You know, maybe you want to have an oven where in Mexico it may not be as common to have an oven. There no. are places that are modern that do have an oven, but not everybody uses an oven. No. So learn where you're going. And that brings me back to the house owners. What you were talking about. I was speaking about the house owner situation. Yeah. Um we saw we had watched this couple <clears throat> go over to Ecuador. You know, Ecuador had a big expat, well not expat, big foreigner, you know, um, population pop up over there. And um, she had went down, she had gone over there and she had um, told the real estate agent, they were like, what are you looking for? She said, I'm looking for this, I'm looking for this, and also looking for a walk-in closet. So her husband jumped in and said, basically what she's telling you, she would like to have the U.S. in Ecuador. He was saying it in a, like a sarcastic way, like she need to be realistic. And, and then the uh, real estate agent <clears throat> was like, um, the things that you're asking for, they're going to cost so much more money. Because I guess to the simple, for the simple fact of, like down here in Mexico, you don't have all these walk-in closets. But if you have walk-in closets, you better believe you're going to be playing, paying a pretty penny. You have more like the cabinets. And you have plenty, have the space, plenty of and, space. And there's space in there. So... Um, Sorry about that, guys. I get real choked up maybe some passages. But what I was trying to say in Ecuador, um, she was pretty much saying, like, if you want this, you're going you're gonna to have to pay X amount of dollars. And the lady was like, no, I researched that you can get a place for $350 up to $800. And, it, and the, that's true. The truth is you could have done that. But she's trying to explain to her the things that you want. She wanted an open concept with, Kitchen. like, the, the, the wood floors and the marble countertops, granite. Backsplash and, and, and all and these things. And a huge patio to fit up to, I think it was 40 people yeah, she was to like, entertain. Exactly. And that lady pretty much telling her, like, you can live like the culture, how we, we normally would live over here in Ecuador. Meaning you can live good, but at the same time, you're not going to have all these things. Because they had took her, taken them to the kitchen, and the kitchen wasn't what they were saying. They're like, oh, I need an oven. I need a, 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 yeah, a big double refrigerator. And that's one thing that you're not going to always have. And, and we speak about that as well. Like we're fortunate. Yes, we have this right now, the oven. But you don't get that all the but time. But in our You're other not, um, casita, in our other apartment, we only had the cooktop. In Greta, you'll see we didn't have that. Yeah. So that's the point I'm just trying to say. It's more of like, like, like the comment was saying. When you migrate to Ecuador, Panama, Costa Rica, Thailand, yeah, all these Philippines, places. Mexico. You have to understand that you you have to block out your your style of living how you were living in the United States or Canada or wherever you were coming from because we are privileged over there to have certain things and the styles the culture is going to be different. Not saying that they're living horrible over here, so please don't twist that around, Twitter fingers or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, I'm just pretty much saying that. You, you you have you might have a different standard like the exactly. oven you might think oh i have to have a garden tub you may not you're not going to have a typical it's not no. typical to have a garden tub in your bathroom showers and even in italy where you you all know i've mentioned this before my father was an italian immigrant i said in the last video that that i just mentioned mm -hmm. and you know when i went to italy it, it's a wake up call. You, 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 they have a little shower and you sit, it's like a chair, and you do what you have to do and you, get, you, do, you do your business and you get out. Yeah. You know, you have to, you know, really create that or renovate a place for it to have all those things because yeah. those things may not be important. They're big on tiles in Italy as well. Everything is tiled up from the, from the walls down to the floor. There are different styles and things. So yeah. you have to, you have to, you know, leave that behind and, and respect the culture of the place you're going to and do your research and stop saying you want to you know you want to live in a country but what it all boils down to is that you want to have all the things that you couldn't have exactly. in your native country yeah. that's what we're saying pretty much yeah and i have seen another house hunter that's what exactly what a young lady has said i don't want to lose my standard of living what i'm having over here i don't want to go somewhere and live a certain way i just find that to be like are you serious because um, you're not going to have carpets over in Mexico. We haven't come across that at all over here. And we don't, carpets. because it's, it's warm mm -hmm. and you're, it, exactly. it keeps you hot. There's a, re there's a reason for everything. <clears throat> think, think. Yep, exactly. You know?
So, um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much what we were saying. And, and it's more of you tell us your thoughts, your thoughts of what you think a lot of what you how you would like to come down here, or yeah. what do you think how American how don't say the word Americans well people from the United States or Canada come down like what are their whole purpose of coming yeah. down what, what is the goal you what know is what, the, what, what is do you the think end game? and again there's a mixture you have different percentages like my husband talked about people who are truly coming here for for real reasons for legitimate reasons and then there's a small percentage of people maybe that are coming here because they just you know, we all want to stretch, make our money, our currency go further. We talked about this, mm -hmm. but we do it humbly and we don't forget, you know, how the people in other countries, their wages are much less. And we don't, you know, take that mentality and just, oh, I'm just going to worry about, uh, you know, us, uh, you know, me and uh, my three and my family and we're good. We're going to have the pool in the house and who cares about how it affects the locals or anybody else who's moving here that is trying to live simply, you know, so that's what I'm saying. So we want to hear your thoughts. Like I mentioned earlier. We'll show you the cooking result later. We got into a hot topic. You see, you're passionate. The hands got to yeah. moving. But we'll show you the result later of the food, and we want to hear your thoughts. I want the again be respectful. You can say your opinion and be respectful. You know, so share your thoughts. You know, the people you know. Why did they move to other countries that were considered more affordable? Right? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you? Why do? You, why would you move to another? What? What are your yeah. intentions? Really sit there. Let, let's have an honest conversation. You know, and we, we try not to judge each other, but let's yeah. let's go back and forth. And we can say, you know, disagree, but let's do it respectfully. So that's pretty much the bottom line. Yeah, and I just want to chime in and say, yeah, we can have, if we can, we have the, the uh, that's our choice. That's our right to have different opinions. We can have different opinions, but we still can get along and sit at the table and drink a glass of wine. Yeah. Um, but you know that our channel isn't about luxury living. We're not going to be about, um, this is how the luxury live over here, or this is what luxury money can get you and yeah. we don't we don't do all that we give you the real honest truth and we tell you about pretty much adapting to the culture and just fitting in like being part of not being adding separated. to the community adding, not not, exactly. not changing it add to the community bring positivity bring exactly you know bless and do whatever you can do <clears throat> but you don't have to come in and change it for selfish purposes that's the point yep. but as you all know if you are popping into our channel for the first time we have a lot of informative content this is more of a cook and freestyle we were hanging out with friends and we're just having a conversation back and forth maybe having a glass of wine or whatever it is that you do you know and we're just being real real just real talk right now straight talk okay so you know we have temporary residency videos we have three parts we have one and two that show you how to obtain your temp temporary residency in mexico or residency in general, honestly, mm -hmm. because those steps will take you either or, either way, permanent residency or temporary, depending on what you're trying to achieve. I did the renewal, how to renew your residency. I show you the websites, the forms, how to fill them out, everything, and give you tips. Okay, we have done multiple apartment tours, multiple cost of living in Mexico. Neighborhood tours. Could neighborhood tours, so much. And now you know we live in beautiful Aguas Calientes uh, in Mexico. So. Yeah. Make sure you check out our library of content. We have a lot of Mexico travel as well. We are definitely, um, I would say, different than most YouTubers. Okay, yeah. very, different. very different. And we take pride in being different. And, and the, our valuable viewers who know us from day one, you know, they tell us you're a breath of fresh air. That's why they appreciate, you know, what we do. But just be careful, guys. The more we continue to grow, because we're growing. And we have people all over the world. You're going to have people who are trying to com be chameleons and try to camouflage and act like... They, they see that what we're doing naturally, it, it touches people's hearts and they're going to try to, you know, create that Emily type God. of a character. Yeah, exactly. To get views. So be very careful yeah. when you, you know, pay attention to the channel. That's what I'm saying. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> yep. And as you see, it's, it's not scripted. Like my wife is saying, it's just like you and I, we sit around have a conversation. Yeah. You will catch us sitting on the street corner, hanging out with the locals. You'll catch us. At a, at a little restaurant, eating with the local, we, we're just we're just common, cool people, man. Uh, we hang out with anybody. We don't care uh, because we have a, a very our background. We we've come through. It. We've been through it. So we had lows. We had highs. So mm -hmm. like yeah. anybody in the world, but yeah. We'll end it as we always do, and then stay tuned because you are going to see the beautiful creation of this brown stew chicken and coconut rice and my husband's lovely steamed cabbage. He makes it for me. I, I keep begging him to cook more for me. Help me out in the comments. Tell him to cook more for me. 
No. I just I, I have to beg him just to make a side dish, really. No, I like so, I, I like what she cooked. You ever you guys have watched that movie on Bridesmaids <laughs> when the girl said, Mmm, look at that cookie. <laughs> and she bit it, she said, Mmm, delicious. That's how I feel about her no, food. And, I'm, food and, and I'm the girl on Bridesmaids kicking the cookie <laughs> saying, Who is gonna eat all of this cookie? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> well ends as we always yeah. do. Live the life that you were meant to live. Keep a grateful heart. And remember, stay tuned for this chicken. And remember, why not now? All right, guys. Peace. Baby, if you think you're lonely now, you know how you, when you're about to eat, you know, you start singing, get all happy and excited. So, hey, you see this brown stew chicken, about to put it on this coconut rice. Have the cabbage right there. And we put this nice sauce on there. Lord, I admire that. Boom, there you go. Time to dig in, guys.